welcome back to the Fountain of Random Knowledge, your gateway to the extraordinary tales of the natural world. Join me as we unravel the enchanting story of patternless giraffes, creatures that defy convention and spark our curiosity. Our story begins in the heart of the Bright's Zoo, amidst picturesque landscapes of Tennessee. Here, a momentous event unfolded that would captivate the world. Meet Kipke, a giraffe unlike any other, whose very existence left us spellbound. Kipke's coat, typically adorned with the iconic spots that grace giraffes, presented a blank canvas, strikingly spotless. This birth was more than an event, it was a rarity not witnessed in captivity for nearly half a century. At first, Kipke was seen as a singular marvel, an anomaly in the world of giraffes. But our tale was far from over. Halfway around the world, amidst the untamed beauty of Namibia, nature revealed a remarkable secret. Another spotless giraffe, a phenomenon previously unrecorded in the wild. Unlike Kipke, this newfound wonder belonged to the Angolan giraffe subspecies, further igniting our fascination. Current theories point to genetic mutation as possible explanations, yet the complete answer remains elusive. However, these gentle giants, with their majestic presence, face formidable challenges. Habitat loss, the relentless specter of poaching, and the ever-looming threat of climate change. Shockingly, the entire giraffe population across Africa now numbers fewer than 117,000 individuals. Yet within these challenges, hope emerges as a guiding light. Committed organizations have risen to the occasion, embarking on incredible missions. Notably, the Giraffe Conservation Foundation, in collaboration with Africa Park and the government of Angola, undertook an astonishing endeavor. Against all odds, they successfully transported 14 Angolan giraffes an incredible journey spanning 800 miles, navigating through terrain bereft of proper roads and infrastructure. This remarkable journey took them from Namibia to Iona National Park in Angola, marking the first time in decades that Angolan giraffes roamed their ancestral lands. I am confident that this newfound interest will inspire more individuals to stand tall for the giraffe, to become champions of their cause, and to offer unwavering support to the ongoing efforts aimed at securing the future of these remarkable creatures within our world. The wonder is out there. We just have to be looking for it. Welcome back, knowledge seekers. Today, we're taking a journey into the heart of Southern Ohio's coal country, where a colossal marvel known as Big Muskie once ruled the landscape. This engineering giant wasn't just massive, it had an unconventional way of getting around. But before we dive into Big Muskie's story, let's set the stage. Ohio has long been a treasure trove of coal resources, with different types of coal to fuel various industries. Among them was the unique Cannell Coal, known for its high energy density and historic use in oil lamps. Big Muskie's story begins with the Central Ohio Coal Company, a key player in Ohio's coal mining industry. Now picture this, a machine that stood as tall as a 22-story building, weighed a staggering 27 million pounds, and was wider than an eight-lane highway. Big Muskie wasn't your typical mining equipment. It was a true industrial giant. And its distinctive feature? It didn't roll or crawl it actually waddled. This waddling was a sight to behold as it moved from one location to another. This waddling was necessary because of the immense size. Conventional tracks or wheels would never be able to move it. But why was Big Muskie even needed? Well, Ohio's coal reserves, including bituminous coal and subbituminous coal, powered everything from electrical generation to steel production. Big Muskie's primary mission? Extracting the coal, the backbone of Ohio's coal mining sector, this colossal bucket could hold 220 cubic yards of coal, equivalent to 12 standard dump trucks. During its inauguration ceremony, the entire local high school marching band 
was able to fit and play from with inside the bucket. But as we celebrate Big Muskie's incredible feats, it's essential to recognize the environmental impact of burning fossil fuels. This brings us to the pressing need for transitioning to sustainable and eco-friendly energy sources to combat climate change and help protect our environment. Yet even amidst the challenges posed by coal mining and burning fossil fuels, the Central Ohio Coal Company showed remarkable commitment to land restoration. Guided by environmental regulations and a growing awareness of the importance of land reclamation, they embarked on an ambitious project. The result? The Birth of the Wilds, an animal conservation sanctuary situated on reclaimed mining land. Today, the Wilds is a global leader in preserving endangered species, some of which are completely extinct in the wild. It serves as an exceptional educational institution, demonstrating how human innovation can heal the land and coexist harmoniously with nature. So as we look to the future, we're reminded of the imperative to embrace sustainable energy sources and protect our environment for generations to come. And that's it for today's journey. Until next time. Hey there, knowledge seekers. Welcome back to the Fountain of Random Knowledge. Today, we're diving deep into a mind-boggling mystery. Massive tunnels, too elaborate to be natural, discovered in South America. These tunnels, known as Paleo Burrows, unlock secrets of ancient megafauna that leave us with more questions than answers. Our journey begins with Professor Heinrich Frank, a geologist. He stumbled upon a peculiar tunnel at a construction site, sparking one of the most intriguing discoveries in recent memory. This tunnel, a whopping 15 feet in length, left everyone puzzled. It defied conventional geological explanations. But what awaited Professor Frank at its end was truly astonishing. Giant claw marks etched into the tunnel's ceiling. Professor Frank knew there was no geological process in the world that could produce such features. So geological forces and ancient humans were ruled out as creators. Enter the megafauna, specifically giant ground sloths. These prehistoric creatures the size of African elephants may hold the key to this puzzle. Heinrich Frank and his team uncovered over 1,500 tunnels. It's believed that teams of giant sloths over generations meticulously carved out these tunnels for protection from environmental factors and predators. But did humans interact with these giant sloths? Fossilized footprints found in Utah suggest possible stalking and hunting of these formidable creatures. The sloth's powerful arms and claws made them lethal in close quarters. Researchers have known about these tunnels since the 1930s, but considered them an archeological structure. It wasn't until recently that they delved deeper into their origins. These paleo burrows come in different sizes, shapes, some stretching for hundreds of meters and branching into chambers. As researchers explored, they uncovered these distinct claw marks on the tunnel walls, believed to be the result of these massive claws. This solidified the giant sloth theory. The discovery of these tunnels finally answered questions about Pleistocene megafauna, but many mysteries still linger. The paleo burrows of South America shed light on the ancient world where giant sloths and armadillos once roamed, leaving behind these underground networks. Their intriguing claw marks provide a fascinating glimpse into the behavior and ecology of these now extinct megafauna, leaving us in awe of Earth's past. That's it for today's journey with the Fountain of Random Knowledge. If you found this video fascinating as I did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of our world. Amidst the vast wilderness of North America, a magnificent creature roams, the American bison. Today, we attempt to clarify a common misconception that the American bison and buffalo are the same animal. We'll explore this mix-up while clarifying that the American bison has never been a true buffalo. The term buffalo has a rather intriguing history in the English language. Back in Shakespeare's time, 
military individuals often sported a protective coat known as a buff coat. These coats, crafted from undyed leather, were surprisingly thick and soft. When the English set foot in the New World, any animal yielding similar leather got the tag buff. As time marched on, other North American critters got their own unique names, leaving the largest of the bunch, the American buffalo, with the exclusive claim to the title. Now here's the catch with the term buffalo. It's been used before. It was applied to the water buffalo in Asia and the cape buffalo in Africa. Taxonomists, the folks in charge of classifying and naming organisms, saw this as a problem, especially considering that the American buffalo isn't closely related to these animals at all. To solve this naming dilemma, they proposed the term bison already in use in the Latin name of a related European animal, the Wysant, or Bison Boanus. Despite these efforts to bring clarity, we now find ourselves in a situation where this magnificent creature has two usable names. It's kind of like how a mountain lion, a puma, and a cougar are all considered the same animal. So it's no surprise that many discussions about our four-legged friends often kick off with the question, what sets a buffalo apart from bison? To clarify this confusion, let's begin with geography. The American bison, as suggested by its name, resides in North America, primarily the United States and Canada. While Europe also has its own distinct species of bison, they are all but extinct. Similarly, the American bison faced near extinction during the late 19th century's Great Slaughter. Fortunately, a few small herds managed to evade this fate by seeking refuge deep within the interior of Yellowstone Park. On the other hand, buffalo species are found continents away, spanning across Africa and Asia. This geographical separation lays the groundwork for these potential misunderstandings. Let's zoom in on their physical characteristics. American bison sport short, curved horns, where buffalo often exhibit long, sweeping horns that gracefully arch backwards. Bison have a thick coat of fur, including a thick beard, to help them deal with the severe cold throughout the winter. Buffalo, on the other hand, inhabit a much warmer climate, so have a much thinner, finer coat of fur. Adding another level of similarity is the social behavior exhibited by these creatures. American bison often form smaller family groups or herds, maintaining a moderate level of social organization. In contrast, buffalo, especially the Cape buffalo, are recognized for congregating in larger herds, particularly during the rainy season, sometimes numbering in the thousands. It's conceivable that this distinction is a more recent adaptation, influenced by the significant reduction in the overall population of American bison. Currently, the majority of them belong to small private herds, with the only remaining mostly wild population within Yellowstone Park. Historically, during the time of Manifest Destiny and the Great Westward Expansion, there are accounts of horses perishing due to starvation when they were trapped behind massive bison herds that had stripped the land clear of vegetation. Thus, in the past, bison herds certainly rivaled, if not surpassed, buffalo herds in size. And it's essential to recognize that the American bison is a distinct species with its own unique place within North America. By shedding light on the factors behind the confusion, we can cultivate a deeper appreciation for these remarkable creatures and preserve their unique role in our natural world. The wonder is out there. We just have to be looking for it. Welcome back, curious minds, to another fascinating episode from the Fountain of Random Knowledge. 
Today, we're diving deep into the complex and mysterious world of mirror neurons. These enigmatic cells hidden within our cerebral cortex. Our journey begins in the labs of the University of Parma during the 1990s. The Italian neurobiologist Giacomo Rizzolatti and his team were studying the brains of macaque monkeys. While monitoring these monkeys, they stumbled upon an astonishing revelation. Certain neurons in the monkeys' brains fired not only when the monkeys themselves performed an action, but also when they watched another monkey or even a human perform the same action. These neurons acted like mirrors, replicating observed actions with incredible precision. Hence, they were fittingly named mirror neurons. The discovery of mirror neurons didn't just shake up the scientific world, it caused a paradigm shift in our understanding of the human brain. Imagine watching someone climb a staircase. Your mirror neurons kick into action, allowing you to mentally simulate this action as if you were the one doing it. This unique mirroring ability isn't just about imitation. It forms the very foundation of our capacity to learn. Let's also explore their impact on empathy. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the emotions of others, is a cornerstone of human interaction. And guess what? Mirror neurons are also at the heart of this trait. They help us form connections between stimuli and responses, giving us insights into the how of performing a skill and the why behind others' intentions. They let us step into someone else's shoes by simulating their actions and helping to understand their motivations. Researchers are still debating whether mirror neuron dysfunction plays a role in conditions like autism, or empathy can be challenging. It's a topic that certainly requires more research. Mirror neurons are more than just about individual learning and empathy. They have profound implications for human culture. Think about it. They provide the neurological foundation for imitation, which is the fundamental way that we pass on skills and knowledge. Whether it's perfecting culinary techniques, or mastering a musical instrument, mirror neurons are the secret sauce behind our ability to observe and replicate actions. There's also a linguistic twist. Some researchers suggest that mirror neurons may have played a vital role in the evolution of language. Just as we observe and imitate actions, we also observe and imitate words. The mirroring mechanism in mirror neurons could have made learning and understanding language a much simpler process, further solidifying their influence on our culture. So how can we harness the power of mirror neurons in education? Observational learning, where knowledge is acquired by observing action, goes beyond mere imitation. It leads to profound changes within the individual. Imagine passionate teachers who convey their subjects with fervor and joy, igniting students' motivation by fostering highly effective learning experiences. If all of that wasn't enough, there's even more. Potentially why yawns are so contagious. When we see someone yawn, these neurons kick in, mentally simulating the yawn as if we were the ones feeling tired or drowsy. It's a fascinating connection between mirror neurons and our innate drive to imitate and empathize with others. Scientists continue to unravel the mysteries of mirror neurons promising us deeper insights into our brains, social behaviors, and the foundations of empathy, culture, and perhaps even human consciousness itself. That's a wrap for today's episode of The Fountain of Random Knowledge. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the human mind. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you stay updated with all of our mind-boggling explorations. Until next time, Stay curious. Welcome viewers to another enthralling voyage through the cosmos with the fountain of random knowledge. 
Today, we explore one of astrophysics' enduring enigmas, the black hole. These cosmic giants formed from the colossal gravitational collapse of massive stars have intrigued scientists for generations. We embark on a journey into a unique perspective on black holes, an alternate concept, the Gravistar hypothesis. While I approach this concept with a fair amount of skepticism, I also acknowledge the importance of considering alternate theories in our pursuit of knowledge. After all, science thrives on skepticism and inquiry. It is essential that we balance open-minded exploration with rigorous scientific scrutiny. Throughout the annals of scientific history, we've witnessed humanity's inclination to cling to prevailing dogmas it's falling. The sky is falling. until overwhelming empirical evidence and fresh perspectives compel us to revise our understanding. Consider, for instance, the once ubiquitous belief that Earth was at the center of the universe. It endured until systematic observation and scientific reasoning illuminated the truth. Now let's delve into the Gravistar hypothesis, a theoretical model proposed as an alternative to the traditional black hole theory. Coined from gravitational vacuum condensate star, this idea emerged in 2004 through groundbreaking work of Mauser and Matola. Entropy as a thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work. It's often interpreted as the degree of disorder or randomness in a system. At its core, the Gravistar theory proposes that these cosmic entities possess lower entropy compared to the conventional black hole. When a star collapses beyond the point of neutron degeneracy, its constituent particles transform into a state described by the principles of a Bose-Einstein condensate. Bose-Einstein condensate as a state of matter exists at absolute zero, representing the polar opposite of plasma, a state of matter characterized by extremely high energy levels. This transformation results in the creation of what's essentially a massive atom, primarily composed of bosons, rather than a singularity typically associated with black holes. Inner structure of the Gravistar is believed to exist within a de Sitter space-time, characterized by positive vacuum energy, generating an internal negative pressure. This negative pressure prevents the Gravistar from undergoing further gravitational collapse. Perhaps the most striking departure from the conventional black hole theory is the notion that the event horizon, traditionally considered an immutable boundary, is not derived from Einstein's field equations. Instead, it's suggested to be the outer shell of the Bose-Einstein matter. Anything encountering this boundary becomes integrated into the Gravistar, akin to matter impacting a neutron star. While the Gravistar hypothesis has sparked interest among some in the scientific community as a potential alternative for traditional black holes, it remains a niche concept with limited support. Moreover, empirical evidence substantiating its validity is still absent, leaving my skepticism intact. As scientists, it's our solemn duty to maintain open minds and entertain unconventional ideas. However, we must also adhere unwaveringly to the rigorous principles of the scientific method, which demand robust empirical testing and validation. What may seem peculiar today could either lead to a groundbreaking revelation or be refuted by our tireless pursuit of knowledge. And so, dear viewers, we conclude this captivating journey into the cosmos. Remember that our universe is a treasure trove of wonders where the quest for truth and knowledge continues to beckon. Thank you for joining me on this cosmic odyssey. Welcome knowledge seekers to the fountain of random knowledge. Today, we're embarking on a quest 
to unravel the mysteries of the ancient pyramids, armed with newfound insights. The ancient Egyptian civilization possessed incredible knowledge and skills, often leaving us in awe. In the past, the lack of information was always the biggest hurdle to understanding their methods. But as we continue to explore in the digital age, we face a new challenge, one much harder to combat, conspiracy theories and the pseudoscience used to support them. These ideas, often fueled by science fiction, have cast a shadow over the achievements of these ancient civilizations. The internet is awash with tales, very few based on empirical data. It's time to bring these theories back to where they belong, in the realm of science fiction. On to the matter at hand, the legendary pyramids of Giza. These colossal structures are not just symbols of Egypt's heritage, they are monuments to human ingenuity. Archaeologists have scrutinized their construction, revealing methods that, while simpler than we might think, are based on solid engineering principles. Contrary to extravagant claims, the Egyptians didn't resort to mysticism, hidden tech, or alien intervention to build the pyramids. They wielded basic tools, like ropes, wooden logs, copper chisels, and more. Precision was achieved through careful planning, not magic. Recent discoveries have shed light on the logistics of pyramid construction. Limestone blocks quarried at Tura were shipped to the construction site using an old branch of the Nile River near Giza, which made the transport of the needed materials much easier. Records, including those from Mirror's newly uncovered journal, reveal fascinating day-to-day -day details which support this theory. And remember the words of Zahi Hawass, a famous Egyptologist, archaeologist, and the former Minister of State for the Antiquities Affairs of Egypt. When we find something new at Giza, we announce it to the world. The Sphinx and the Pyramids are world treasures. We are the guardians of these treasures, but they belong to the world. Egyptian ingenuity was fueled by a formidable workforce and unwavering dedication. These grand structures didn't appear overnight. Pharaohs harnessed immense power, marshalling vast resources and an extensive labor force. Understanding this construction necessitates considering it within the context of an authoritarian society, where the pharaoh was revered as a living deity. At times, their entire society revolved around these massive projects. Imagine the entire population of Bozeman, Montana. Focused on one singular goal. Beyond the Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt's history boasts other remarkable structures. Each offers insights into ancient engineering and architectural concepts. The Sphinx. Abu Samel, Karnak, the Luxor Temple, the Colossi of Memna, the list goes on. Egyptians mastered the art of cutting hard stones with basic tools, disproving fantastical claims of advanced alien technology. It was their patience and dedication that enabled such feats. In conclusion, the allure of ancient aliens is captivating, but we must remember the incredible capabilities of ancient humanity. They showcased remarkable ingenuity, problem-solving skills, and an enduring commitment to innovation time and time again. From the pyramids of Giza to the Valley of the Kings, their achievements stand as enduring testaments to human creativity and resilience. Let's celebrate the remarkable contributions of our ancestors and their legacy of innovation. Thank you for joining me on this enlightening journey through the ages. If you enjoyed our exploration on the fountain of random knowledge, be sure to subscribe for more insights into the world's mysteries. The wonder is out there. We just have to be looking for it. Curious minds to the fountain of random knowledge. Today we dive into the mysterious realm of the iconic T-Rex and attempt to unravel the myths spun by Jurassic Park. Are you ready to embark on a quest 
to separate fact from fiction in the colossal domain of this prehistoric giant. In the cinematic masterpiece Jurassic Park from 1993, Dr. Alan Grant's resonant command hey, hey, Dan, freeze! triggers a compelling question that has endured. Did the T-Rex truly rely on the movement of its prey for detection? While well, the movie asserts that the T-Rex exclusively perceived moving objects, real-life science unveils a much richer narrative. Kent A. Stevens, a scientist from the University of Oregon, embarked on a groundbreaking journey to uncover the T-Rex's binocular range, a crucial aspect of its vision evolving over millions of years. The result? He traced the extraordinary transformation of the T-Rex's snout, evolving into a lower and narrower shape, clearing its sight lines and expanding its eyeballs. As is common in predators, including modern raptors like hawks and eagles, the eyes of the T-Rex face forward. They were also set wide apart, giving T-Rex excellent depth perception to aid in the pursuit of its prey. The eyes were set relatively high on the head, boosting this dinosaur's ability to see longer distances. The T-Rex boasted a visual acuity that may have surpassed humans by as much as 13 times. Its vision wasn't just impressive, it stood as an unparalleled marvel of nature, potentially reaching an astounding 20, 1.5. That means a T-Rex could see at 20 feet what the average human can only see at a foot and a half. In contrast, today's birds of prey, the best eyes of modern animals, max out at about 25 vision. And in humans, 2010 is essentially the best you can hope for. This leaves T-Rex in a league all on its own. In other words, this means the T-Rex could discern objects whether in motion or not. Nature's precision, shaped by the relentless pressure of natural selection, granted the T-Rex a remarkable ability to perceive the world three-dimensionally with unparalleled precision. Above and beyond all that, you have to consider in the intricate dance of predator and prey. Freezing in the face of danger is a common strategy among prey animals. A predator solely relying on detecting movement to find its prey would likely never develop in the first place. Enter the T-Rex, armed with remarkable vision, a true apex predator in every sense. Perhaps the greatest land predator to have ever lived. Now, returning to Jurassic Park, where the idea of filling the gaps in dinosaur DNA with frog DNA added to the misconception that the T-Rex vision limitations were due to the frog DNA. In reality, the vision of frogs may be more sensitive to movement, but crucially, they can see both moving and non-moving objects. Thus, the movie's portrayal of the T-Rex's limited vision leans more towards fiction than fact. Expanding on the inaccuracies, the Jurassic Park saga presents a paradox regarding the T-Rex's speed. Must go faster. In the inaugural movie, it's a lightning fast creature with the ability to chase down a speeding jeep. Yet in Jurassic World, Bryce Dallas Howard miraculously manages to outpace one on foot, in heels. Scientific consensus suggests that they likely had a maximum speed ranging between 17 and 25 miles per hour. The cinematic portrayals present intriguing, though disparate, extremes. The scientific revelations about the T-Rex not only debunk cinematic myths, but have revolutionized our understanding of this iconic dinosaur. The real T-Rex, with its extraordinary vision, stands as a testament to the ever-evolving mysteries of the natural world, continually reshaping 
our perceptions on Earth's distant past. To be clear, I love these movies. However, it's crucial to remember that the truth about these ancient creatures is often far more intriguing than the fiction portrayed on the silver screen. Thank you for joining me at the Fountain of Random Knowledge. If this journey into the T-Rex's world piqued your curiosity, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Stay curious, stay informed, and until next time, keep seeking knowledge.